morning. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. I am Sarah Jane Nixon. I'm the pastor at New Dublin Presbyterian Church. And my name is Don Hanshu. I'm one of the pastors here at Dublin United Methodist Church, and we're super excited that you allow us to spend some time with you on this Wednesday evening. And we are uh, glad to be together and glad to be with you. We are reading part of Psalm 119 today. I say part because it is, I believe, it is certainly the longest uh, psalm in the, the book of Psalms. And I, it might be the longest chapter in the Bible. I believe that's right. Yep. It's, 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 uh, it's a big thing. Uh, and it's almost completely about the law of God, which is very odd to those of us who are living today because we tend to think of the law of God as something we all just kind of have to deal with. Uh, we're not going to write you know, an enormously long poem about how great it is, I think, in general. But we have a lot to learn from it. A lot of times the strangest things to us in the Bible are the things that we have the most to learn from. So it's the beginning. It's Psalm 119, 9 to 16. Go ahead. I invite you uh, to, to pull it up. And will you pray for us? Yeah, let's have a prayer. God, help us as we jump into this word and your message that is for us tonight. Help us delight in the right things, to have our ears and eyes opened so that we would follow where you lead us as we discover together. God, us, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. So the first thing I guess you might notice about this thing is that it's addressed to young people. And you might read it and think to yourself, well, I am not a young person. And uh, I just want you to consider that if you're alive, you are a young person in the eyes of God who has given us eternal life. You're going to live a lot longer. Uh, so this is for all of us. Maybe it's m most helpful for, you know, people who society thinks is sowing their wild oats right now. But um, it's, it's got a word for everybody. And we're going to focus this morning on 14 to 16. So I'm going to read that little chunk out loud to you. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not reject your word. And you know what strikes me about this is all the times that it talks about rejoicing and delighting in great riches. And once again, you know, that's not necessarily the way we respond when we hear you know, a random reading of scripture. There's probably a few verses, right, of scripture that no matter what you're feeling like will always uh, fill you with joy and hope. But I'd be willing to bet that the vast majority of the Bible, you know, does not do that automatically for you. Yeah, it takes a little context. You have to kind of understand what else is mm -hmm. being said. And, you know, it's, sometimes there are some great passages. You know, I can do all things to God who strengthens me. The Philippians, you know, 4.13. You know, there's some passages that kind of drop out, like or John 3.16. Or mm -hmm. it's like, oh, that does bring me delight. But it's probably also because you know the history and the purpose of that passage that also brings it to you. So it's kind of drop on out. It seems, huh. But this, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole concept of, being, of delighting yeah. in decrees is has a lot of merit for us to kind of spend some time on this tonight. And even if, uh, you know, even if this is not, you know, you, that you don't feel like this applies to you, right, you don't delight in, there's a ton of things that, you know, we learn to love, that we learn to delight in, that we don't necessarily do at first. I'm thinking about broccoli or something, you know, when you're a kid, uh, your vegetables may be not so good, you grow up a little bit, you learn to like them. Uh, and there's an enormous multi-billion dollar industry that is designed to make us love things that we didn't love before, and it is called advertising. <laughs> we were, lots of things that you can, that we, yeah, we just see way too many advertisements. <laughs> you, what was that many. number? It was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, we looked it up before we started this. The average person sees between 6,000 and 10,000 ads a day. <laughs> Which is crazy until you consider that every time you're on social media or any other website, there's all those ads that go down the side every time you drive down the road. Drive down the car, drive by any establishment that has a sign outside or a real estate sign or, mm -hmm. you know, anything for yard sale sign, any that kind of counts. You know, in another way to think about it, all, you know, all those things that we're bombarded with, learning how to de delight in God's decrees, it's like I... I don't really delight when I have a police officer behind me with their <laughs> lights on. 
but it's not very exciting for me, you know? <laughs> um, however, I actually do delight that we have police officers that take care of what needs to be taken care of in our community. So, you know, there's a reason, you know, all kinds of motivators for you to kind of stay in the, in the straight and narrow. But um, that's maybe perhaps another way to think about how mm-hmm. to delight in, in mm-hmm. those things. Yeah, so we learn to delight in things, or we, or we del- recognize that even if it doesn't feel good right now, in general, we're glad things like, you know, law <laughs> enforcement exists. Next week is Holy Week, right? Palm Sunday is this Sunday, and then we're going to go through step by step, day by day, every, every step on the way uh, to Jesus' death and resurrection. And a lot of times, if we're in certain moods, Holy Week can feel like a police officer that's behind you with, with his lights on. You feel like, uh, great, now is the time of the year where I get to feel sad and guilty about how much uh, bad things I've done and, and how much Jesus had to suffer for it. But I want to encourage you not to, not to experience Holy Week like that this year. Instead of, act, you know, experiencing it as an indictment of how terrible you are, I encourage you instead to listen to the, those familiar stories one more time with a focus on how much God loves you and delights in you. And let those words sink in and change your love and your delight to make it more and more like God's and less and less like, you know, whatever uh, the television or Facebook uh, wants to make you love. God is not selling you anything. God just wants you to be the most in his image that he created you to be. And that's really what Holy Week can do for you. It can really transform you, really fix all of the ways our sin has marred the image of God in our being. So. Let's close with a word of prayer. God, we come to you tonight, and we recognize that our sin has separated you in many ways, and that often... We do not delight in your decrees, but we run from your decrees. Help us, Lord, with courage and with conviction and with hope and understanding of the resurrection. Help us embrace your forgiveness as we name our sinfulness so that we can approach Holy Week in a way that truly is holy. Thank you, Lord, for this time tonight for us to spend together. And we just give you praise. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. We're looking forward to it. And we're going to talk about possums next week, so we'll talk to you then. (laughs)